My father's name was Domenico Basile, and he was born in 1921 in Providence, Rhode Island. His father's name was Francesco, but, and he was born in the village of San Pierre Nigero on the island of Sicily off the coast of Italy. And when my grandfather was growing up, he, they weren't very rich, they didn't have much, they lived in a village on a mountainside. And when we were kids, my father used to always tell us that Grandpa didn't want to ride a donkey his whole life, so he decided to, to come to America. So he did. It was only my father that was able to stay in school, in high school, to graduate. And he graduated in 1939. And he, he prepared through high school to become an electrician. But in his senior year in high school, one of the teachers said to him, you know, you should go to college. So he talked to his parents, and my grandparents said, we can feed you and we can clothe you, but you'll have to do the rest. So he applied to the University of Rhode Island and he applied to Brown University. And he got into both of them. So he chose to go to Brown University. But he needed to earn some money first, so he deferred for a year, and he entered Brown with the class of 1944. Now, at that time, my father tried to join the Marines, but his eyesight wasn't good enough. I mean, his eyesight was pretty good. He didn't need glasses all the time, but you really had to have really perfect eyesight, I guess, to join the Marines. So in July of 1942, when he was 21, and he was enrolled at Brown, he enlisted in the Army, and they let him stay another year in school and not interrupt his studies. So he deferred for a year, and he hoped that the war would end by then, but it didn't. So at Brown, he took courses like chemistry and physics and calculus. Um, he was hoping to be a chemist, but none of them really prepared him to be a mortar crewman, which is what he was going to end up in the Army. So um, according to plan, in June of 1943, he had to leave school, and that's when he entered active service. One thing that was interesting was that Unlike the Japanese, the Italians didn't get interred. I mean, um, there were no camps for the Italians to go to, even though we lived on a coast and so on. So we were pretty lucky that way. But, but they did ask my father when he enlisted if he would be willing to fight in Italy because he could possibly be shooting at relatives. And he said, oh, that would be all right. He, he, he would do whatever they asked him to do. But deep down, the reason he said that was he really wanted to see Italy, where his, grand, where his parents came from. But in the end, they never did send him to Italy. So my dad did his basic training at Fort Benning in Georgia. He was in Company A of the 176th Infantry Regiment, which was part of the 83rd Infantry Division. When we were kids, we used to say, what did you do? And he used to explain to us that he shot a mortar. And he shot the mortar in France and in Luxembourg and in Germany. And in the paperwork, it describes what he had to learn how to do. He had to set up, aim, and fire a 60 millimeter trench mortar. He emplaced the mortar and sighted it on an aiming stake. He estimated range and adjusted weapon for elevation and deflection. He used a firing table to determine necessary charge. And then he fired the weapon by dropping shell into the mortar to strike the firing pin. And it certainly wasn't anything he learned how to do at Brown University. So I... After one of the battles that his um, division had been in, they had to rearrange the army units somewhat in Germany. And so for one day, his 83rd Division was under the direction of General Patton, which my father got all excited about because they had just made a big movie about General Patton starring George C. Scott. And there my father could tell people he fought for Patton. So that, that was something that he was excited about. He departed the United States on June 24th, 1944, and he arrived in Normandy on July 5th, 1944. So he arrived in Europe about a month after the beginning of D-Day, which was June 6th. Um, he participated in the Battle for Normandy in France. And on the internet, we found descriptions of how his division fought the Germans for 23 straight days from dawn until dark. 
after his division uh, fought in Normandy, they moved into Luxembourg, and that was the country uh, that he saw during some of his war experiences that he said he'd love to visit again. He really liked the people there. Until the atomic bombs destroyed Hiroshima and Nagasaki and the victory in Japan happened, everyone, including my father, was preparing to be sent to Japan because they thought they would have to fight through a big, brutal invasion of Japan to finally end that war. But fortunately for us, but unfortunately for the world, those two atomic bombs went off and that it did, the only good to it was it ended World War II. Now, after the war, my father was discharged in November, I believe, of 1945. Now, he had enough education that he could go on to either medical or dental school. He didn't want to go to medical school because I remember him saying he didn't want to see people die, and that could have been part of his experiences from the war. But So what he decided to do, and what he did do was, he went to dental school. He went to Tufts Dental School in Boston. And at, as dental school progressed, at one point he got a notification from Brown University that he had, through going to Tufts, done enough education at Tufts that between the three years he spent at Brown and the time at Tufts, he had earned his diploma to Brown. My grandmother, who couldn't read or write any language, now had her son, who successfully graduated from Brown University and was on his way in 1947 to becoming a, a doctor, becoming a dentist. And he met my mother and dated her for a while, and then he graduated from dental school in 1950. And my mother thought, well, that was nice dating him, but I, I'm Irish, I won't see him again. So he went back to Providence and set up his dental practice, and a year later came back and proposed to my mother. So he ended up marrying my mother, and the rest is history.